Well, welcome. Today I want to show you a quick timeline of the Old Testament story. Ambitious? Yes, but we're going to try it. So, start with me way back <coughs> around about 4,000 years before Christ was born. 4,000 BC. This is roughly when we may mark uh, the time of creation with Adam and Eve. So we'll start back there in Genesis uh, chapter 1, 2, and 3 with that story. And then Genesis chapter 6 through 9, we have the story of Noah and the flood. Uh, the Tower of Babel comes shortly after that. We're coming to the end of Genesis 10 and 11 uh, at that point. Then we have what we call the time of the patriarchs, the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, Abraham being the father of Isaac, Isaac being the father of Jacob, and Jacob being the father of 12 patriarchs, 12 fathers, 12 sons, through really through uh, four different uh, wives. You'll see in my lineup there are five different groupings, but Leah has Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Um, her handmaiden, Bilhah, has uh, Dan and Naphtali. I'm sorry, that's Rachel's handmaiden. And then Leah's handmaiden, Zilpah, has Gad and Asher. And then Leah, again, bears two more children, Issachar and Zebulun. And finally, Rachel is allowed by God to give birth to Joseph and Benjamin. So that completes uh, Jacob's 12 sons, which will become the heads of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, all of this is found in the book of Genesis. And also during this time, uh, time period, we'll have the story of Job, which is probably the oldest um, piece of literature on earth, actually, uh, the, the book of Job in the Bible. Now, Joseph is the man responsible for bringing the Israelites down into Egypt, where they stayed for 400 years and became a great nation. Uh, and then finally, Moses would bring them out of Egypt uh, according to the word of the Lord, and uh, that all happens in the book of Exodus. You'll notice the ten plagues listed there as the judgments of God that God used to get Pharaoh to let his people go. So we've done Genesis and Exodus. Let's move on. As Moses takes them out into the wilderness, the Israelite nation is given the law at Mount Sinai. This is where we have the Ten Commandments given. You shall have no other gods before me, etc. Um, the Israelites were supposed to go into the promised land of Canaan and go ahead and take it uh, to destroy the peoples of the land there, but they, they refused at first, and so God made them wander for 40 years in the wilderness as a judgment uh, against them. So the first generation of Israelites that came out of Egypt died off and it's their children the second generation that are allowed to enter into the promised land now the 40 years of wandering period are recorded in Leviticus numbers and Deuteronomy and then we have the conquest of Canaan which is recorded in the book of Joshua the next of the historical books and Joshua records and he is the leader that takes them into the promised land and they defeat the tribes around, and they each take uh, the 12 tribes are partitioned out in parts of the land of Canaan. For the next uh, 300 years or so, they're ruled by judges. And uh, we have about 17 different judges that we can find in the New Testament, uh, in the Old Testament book of Judges. And the book of Ruth also fits into that time period. So Judges and Ruth record that time terrible time by the way it ends with this quote in those days there was no king in Israel everyone did what was right in his own eyes and so it was a period of anarchy really casting off of God's authority especially uh, but then we get to what's called the United Kingdom uh, if I back up the the last one of the last judges here number 15 is Samuel and it's true that Joel and Abijah, Samuel's two sons, are listed as judges, but Samuel's the last great judge. And during Samuel's time, they asked him to appoint a king, and God says, go ahead and do it. Well, the first king they appoint is King Saul. Uh, he didn't work out so well. 
So God dethroned his family and put King David on the throne. King Solomon then was the son of David. During this time of these three kings, uh, this is a great time uh, where the Israelite nation is united. All 12 tribes are together under one king, one leadership. We often call this the Golden Age of Israel. These are recorded. Uh, king Saul's reign is in 1 Samuel. David's reign is in 2 Samuel and in, in 1 Chronicles. And King Solomon's reign is at the beginning of 1 Kings and at the beginning of 2 Chronicles. You can find uh, those uh, reigns described in those books. Here's a great quote. Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand that is on the seashore in abundance. They were eating and drinking and rejoicing. And you see God's great blessing on them during this united kingdom. They also wrote things like Psalms. Uh, many of the Psalms were written, Solomon wrote many of the Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes and the Song of Solomon. And so much of the Hebrew poetry was written during this time period, though some of it came later as well. But the end of the United Kingdom came with Solomon's son Rehoboam, who did not really follow the path of wisdom and uh, that his father had began. And so... Uh, Rehoboam was allowed only two tribes in the south, and a man named Jeroboam became a king in the north and took ten tribes into the north. So now we have a split kingdom. We, all, we call this the divided kingdom, and I, I'm, I've just laid out, you don't have to go into detail here right now, but I laid out all the kings of the northern kingdom and all the kings of the southern kingdom, and you can uh, just kind of glance through the history there several hundred years um, in the north, you'll, you'll notice as you read and study that period that there were several dynasties. Uh, several times a king would be dethroned and uh, assassinated, and another king would take his place and perhaps have several sons after him rule. But none of those dynasties lasted longer than five kings long. Now in the south, though, King David's line continued unbroken, which was according to God's prophecy. Uh, the, the line of Judah would continue uh, all the way until the seed that was coming. This is one of the great themes of the Old Testament, the coming of David's son. Now, the northern kingdom was taken into Assyrian captivity around 722 B.C., and they were never to return again to the land as the nation of Israel. Uh, during the time of the the divided kingdom. Elijah was a great prophet, and then uh, Elisha was the next great prophet. Elijah was, uh, his life is recorded in 1 Kings 12 through 22, the end of 1 Kings, and in 2 Chronicles 10 through 21. Elisha's um, ministry was recorded in 2 Kings and uh, in 2 Chronicles 22 and beginning, and, uh, and thus we see the uh, uh, the breakdown a little bit. Uh, we can see a division there between Elijah, Elijah and Elisha. Um, Jonah is a great prophet who also prophesied during this time period. And Isaiah, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, and Micah, most of them we know prophesied around the end of the Israelite nation of the north. Several of them prophesied to the northern nation and before they were uh, destroyed by Assyria. But the, the, uh, the Judah kingdom continued for another hundred years or so with several more kings until finally God judged them with Babylonian captivity. The Babylonians came in and took them captive. And it says, And Judah was carried away into exile to Babylon for their unfaithfulness. 1 Chronicles 9 and verse 1. Uh, and so they were, they were taken into captivity. The first group was taken in 605 B.C. by King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, several prophets that prophesied were Jeremiah, he also wrote Lamentations, and Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah all prophesied during this time uh, of the Babylonian captivity. Jerusalem was captured in 597 B.C., and it fell, and Nebuchadnezzar completely destroyed it in 586 B.C. Ezekiel and Daniel... Uh, prophesy in captivity. Daniel was taken during that first group, uh, when the first group was taken, and he's, his lifespan 
um, and his book spans the entire captivity of 70 years until the Israelites are allowed to come back to the land, which began to happen in 536 BC with the return of the first group. King Cyrus the Persian uh, gave the command for them to start going back. Esther, it, it, the story of Esther happens uh, between the, the return of the first group and the time of the rebuilding of the temple. Uh, and then uh, there's a return of a second group. Finally, uh, in 444 BC or so, the Jerusalem wall is rebuilt. Now, Ezra and Nehemiah are the two great men whose, um, whose books give us the history of this time period of the return and the rebuilding of the temple and of the Jerusalem's walls. Haggai and Zechariah are two uh, great prophets who encourage the people to work and, and to get these things done. And Malachi brings us to the very end of the New Old Testament. As far as we can tell, he is the, the last of the prophets. And his very ending um, comments tell us uh, that there's something coming and Elijah is coming who will turn the hearts of the fathers back to the sons, the hearts of the sons back to the fathers and uh, thus setting the stage for John the Baptist. And as soon as we get to the New Testament, that's where we pick up the story of the Bible.